What's going on guys? Blitz here with the Survival Outpost. Thanks for tuning in today. This intro is going to be real short and sweet because we got one particular thing that we're looking at today. This is a first aid kit from Survivewear and contrary to popular opinion, at least my opinion has been that pre-made first aid kits generally suck. So when I got this in, I was like, hmm, hopefully this doesn't suck as bad as the vacuum cleaner that I have that doesn't work. You like that cheesy joke? I do. Anyways, this does not suck. It is an amazing piece of equipment, top quality construction with a lot of quality medical gear inside of it. So we're going to have a look at this and check out the features and all that kind of good stuff. And we're going to start doing that right about now. Let's go. So before we crack this open, a few highlights. Number one, this is 100% waterproof, stormproof zipper, and welded seams. And I did not believe this to be the case, so I had to get myself some proof. I honestly don't think I've ever heard of a company that can brag on an IPX7 rating for their first aid kit, but Survivewear can do that. And I couldn't remember offhand what IPX7 stood for, so I had to have a look. And here you go. It basically means that you can hold this underwater or it can be submerged underwater for 30 minutes up to a depth of one meter, which is great. You know, if you spend a lot of time out of the water, that waterproof rating is going to be awesome for you. Now, next up, label compartments. Good Lord, this gave me all the warm and fuzzies I ever needed on planet Earth because this is so easy to find what you want. And if you are dealing with a medical emergency, you're already under stress, you're already under duress, and you don't wanna be digging into a black hole to find those important medical components. And then the third feature that I love about this kit is the Molly compatibility. You can, let's say, maybe attach this to a Molly seatback panel. Or you can remove this panel completely from the back and utilize the nifty Velcro. For example, I can like slap this on the inside of my trunk and call it a day. Or you can attach it to the outside of your bag. You can use these D-rings. There's just lots of options here for keeping this kit accessible at all times. And then finally, quality construction with this first aid kit, 600D TPU. So those highlights are pretty cool, right? But all of that is kind of pointless if what we have inside of here is basically worthless. So let's go ahead and crack it open. You're gonna take note of these little straps here on the bottom. They can be used to assist in opening this bag up because these seams are 100% welded shut. So it is a little, maybe a little difficult, but not really with this big, huge zipper pull. So get that unzipped here and we can take a look at everything we have in this kit. I'm gonna show you guys something pretty cool here is the fact that you see you got a whole bunch of stuff here, right? You see you got all these different labels, which is awesome for easy identification of what you need to get to in a stressful situation. That obviously makes sense. It just makes your life easier because um, you wanna be able to find things quickly and easily. So that's the first thing that you wanna take note of. And the fact that this does appear to be a completely comprehensive first aid kit, which is important, that's what's something I take into account when I actually look at buying one of these pre-made kits. So it looks like they've covered all the bases here. Now I'm gonna show you something We'll pull this out because the entire pouch itself is Velcro compatible. There you have it, guys. And we can go from right to left or left to right. I don't know. Let's go ahead and go from right to left and we'll have a look at everything that is contained in this panel. And hypothetically, guys, what you could do with all this empty Velcro, you could go ahead and make your own customized kit with Velcro compatible pouches. Maybe kind of emulate this design. I thought what would actually be cool is you see how this entire panel is just basically comprehensive general purpose first aid. But what if they made another insert panel like this that was 100% for dealing with major trauma events? So that would be kind of cool. Maybe there's a spot for tourniquet in here and some combat bandages and all that kind of good stuff. But for now, this is what we're working with. So let's go ahead and get started here. Going from right to left, 
First of all, we're gonna see that there, there are spots for everything here. Not only are there labels on the outside, there's also labels like right here at the top of each one of these compartments. So with the pouches, you have this nice big heavy duty label sticking out. And then with this organizational panel right here, there's labels above um, each compartment. So let's go ahead and look at the first thing we got here. We got a first aid guide. And this is straightforward easy to understand with quality illustrations and it covers everything from basic CPR to uh, burns to shock and what, what is that spinal injury and pretty much everything in between so basically a coverage of common first aid events that you know you don't have to have your um, you know your your doctor degree your fancy degree in order to treat some of these events the idea here guys is to be able to have a first aid kit that is co comprehensive enough and easy enough to understand that yourself with maybe just a cpr course underneath your belt or a basic first aid course can render first aid keep that person in good shape until you can get them to a hospital or first responders arrive so the first aid um guidebook right here pretty cool easy to understand nice big pictures that's what I need especially in a stressful situation I don't want to be looking at a bunch of tiny thought in some medical handbook with a bunch of terms that I don't really understand so carrying on with the org panel we also have a pencil we have some tweezers these are pretty big and heavy duty and you're gonna see that at the end of this I'll show you the things that I have changed up per my preferences got some shears we have some splinter probes. Now I have never used these before, but when I do have an opportunity to use them, I'm definitely gonna try them out. Now moving on to skin cleaning and hygiene. It's got some sting relief, some alcohol prep pads, and some more, we got some antiseptic tablets in the back. So everything to keep you nice and hygienic in terms of your skin. Then, we got some hydro gels. This is for burns and skulls. Now, I, you know, like I don't know about you, but I have burned myself before dealing with fire. So having some burn gel is nice to, um, yeah, it's just a common sense thing to have in a comprehensive first aid kit. Then right here, guys, we got a whole bunch of safety pins. We have some fever scan strips. Now these are nice. You're not seeing a traditional thermometer in the bag. And maybe it might be a good idea to throw one in, but these are real simple, easy to use. So I thought that was cool that they were included in here. And then let's go ahead and move on to this middle panel here. First thing you're gonna see is a CPR kit. There are some gloves. There is detailed directions on how to get CPR done more directions straightforward there is a cpr face shield right here because especially in the days of the good old coronavirus you really want to be placing your lips right on somebody else's lips and plus this is a more effective way to get it done anyways so there's that and then there is also an antiseptic tablet included right here we have some q-tips these are obviously very handy thing to have in a first aid kit. And now we're gonna start looking at compression bandages, combine bandages, wound dressing, and taking care of things that bleed potentially a lot that can kill you. So right here, guys, we got triangle bandage and then an emergency blanket behind that. You wouldn't want to go hyperthermic. So having this blanket will keep your temperature nice and stable or the temperature of the person you're trying to help. Triangular bandage, basically, this can go on the wound directly, and then from there, you can use some sort of form of compression to keep this on the wound and reduce bleeding. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Of course, you can always go with a compression bandage that has that, that gauze built into it. And of course, you'll notice, guys, easy to read labels as always. Hypoallergenic secure dressing, and basically, all this is, we got some medical tape, okay? Now moving on over here, guys, we got wound dressing major wounds. So look at that, nice and thick. I guarantee you that's gonna soak up a lot of blood. And then also we have a bunch of various size conforming bandages over here, which this is a little bit taller. 
seven and a half, so five centimeters, seven and a half. And yeah, we got one, two, we got two of each. So two seven and a half, two five and a half. And then, yeah, that's cool. You got all these wonderful ways to soak up blood. That's super helpful, but if you have no way to really, you know, affix this to the impacted area, hey, it's all good. You got a pressure bandage right here. So combining one of those dressings plus the pressure bandage is gonna allow you to not only stop the bleeding, but then also prevent more bleeding by applying pressure to that wound. Down here, we got more gloves. This is all making a lot of sense in terms of if you're thinking about the type of event you're gonna be dealing with. There's also an emergency whistle. And then finally, talking more about wound dressing, wound closure. Let's go ahead and look at what we got here on this final panel. We got some adhesive dressings and in a nutshell, we're talking some bandages of a variety of different sizes. So yeah, band-aids, cool, definitely good thing to have. Got a combine dressing right here. And of course, guys, look at these labels. Everything is nicely labeled. I know exactly what I'm getting into. We got some eye patches. You can be a pirate, that's pretty cool. Except it's not cool if you do get something in your eye. It kind of sucks. Wound closure strips and a lot more band-aids and sterile strips right here. So these wound closure strips are pretty sweet and they make closing a wound very effective and can be a you know great alternative to having to use um, stitches, which um, a lot of people aren't exactly uh, trained in how to stitch a person up. So with some wounds, you can actually use these wound closures and it'll work out great for you. Other wounds are too big and those are not gonna work as well. So you'd have to use some sort of staples or stitching to keep that wound closed. Now moving on, what do we got here? We got cotton gauze, swabs, and wound cleaning. So check that out. You can mop up an area with these guys. And then there was something else here on the bottom, was there? Oh no, never mind. I got my compartments a little screwed up. See, labeling makes it so easy. Eye protection goes there. And then the cotton gauze swab goes right there. And then what do we got here? Okay, the non-adherent wound dressing. So these are your two by twos, your four by fours, and smaller bandages that you know you can use some of this medical tape on to uh, to affix this to abrasions or small wounds. So just a quick recap here with this kit. It is definitely comprehensive. You see we're covering everything from burns to insect bites to um, you know figuring out if you have a fever to wound dressing to pressure dressings to CPR, which is also a big one. Um, we also have our shears right here to be able to cut clothes off to quickly get to, a, to some sort of wound and deal with it. We got tweezers here, we got a pencil. And you know overall, it does appear to be a very comprehensive kit and I love, love, love all the labeling. And I don't, this is the first kit I've ever seen that actually does that. So good to go. Really appreciate that guys over at Survivewear. Now, let's go ahead and look at what they throw in here as well, which I think is pretty cool. This is a personalized note from the owners of Survivewear and they throw in this handy multi-tool card right here. So let's pop this guy out and you see, you see everything we get. We get a screwdriver, we get a bottle opener, we get a sharpened edge, and what's that, a file over there, and, uh, oh, yeah, protractor even. Now, I don't think I've ever seen a protractor on one of these multi-tools, so that's pretty cool. There's a little wood saw there, spanner wrenches, and yeah, overall, nice. Thanks a lot, guys. And it says, scan me, right there. I haven't done that, I'll have to do that. But anyways, yeah, cool little note from the company. Overall, great branding, great aesthetic, and great labeling, I don't know, for lack of a better term, the organizational functionality on here is you know, just, you know, it, it's just awesome. Plus, this org panel right here, which I thought is pretty nice, and the concept of using an org panel for organizing first aid related items, just, hey, it just makes common sense. I don't know why more companies haven't done that. And then I just gotta make that point one more time, how important having those labels and that organization really is. Because this is an example of your average prepackaged first aid kit that you're gonna get on Amazon or a similar website. You unzip it, and the zipper as well. On this one, it's almost falling apart, but that's a different story. Anyways, you open it up and it's a mess, right? Like, you know, I, well, here's an emergency blanket. 
What do we got? Triangle bandage here. This is like a black hole of just a bunch of stuff. I'm not even sure. So in a situation where the adrenaline is up and I need to find what I need when I need it, like right now, I think uh, the answer is obvious. You can either go with something like this or you can go with something where there's a lot of organization built in with those labels and that just makes good sense. So you've seen an awesome first aid kit. You've seen an example of a not so awesome first aid kit. Now let's go ahead and talk about the tweaks and modifications that I've made to the kit that we've been having a look at because everybody needs to tweak it a little bit to their customizations. The first thing I did was I started to peel off some of their brand duct tape. This is supposed to be super effective. So I figured having some sort of adhesive apart from just that medical tape is definitely a good idea. So that was the first addition to the first aid kit. Secondly, I wanted to be able to deal with getting sprayed in the face with some sort of irritant, pepper spray, whatever the case is. These wipes are super effective in relieving a person of that pain and restoring a little bit of sanity so you can stay in the fight and deal with whatever situation that you might be dealing with there. So I have three of these. They are quite effective, I know from personal experience. So that was another addition along with that duct tape. And then I also wanted to throw in a tourniquet. I thought this was a very good idea. This um, this tourniquet is pretty heavy duty, okay? I, I, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of big, kind of bulky. The regular um, combat application tourniquets are lighter, but they do have an expiration date on this, uh, you know, on them. And this thing is beefy, and I do have room for it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And this backing piece in this panel right here is pretty cool. I picked this up from Blue Force Gear. So tourniquet, and then also an emergency bandage, an actual fully functional trauma wound dressing, or just basically a compression bandage with the gauze built in, because it makes life nice and easy. I mean, here's you know, here's a perfect example right here. Look at all that gauze. It's all built in. There's even a pressure cup right here, and it's easy to use, especially on yourself. Imagine being wounded in the arm, needing to compress that wound to stop the bleeding, but you need to do it one-handed. This is gonna be way more effective, something like this, versus having to do the gauze, get that held on there somehow with one hand, and then wrap it with some sort of compression bandage like what we have right here. So having a compression bandage, wound trauma control thingy, majigger like this guy right here is just common sense and it makes your life a lot easier. So the simple things are the best things, especially in a stressful situation. Then some N95 masks and I know they're from China and that's the only place I can find any damn KN95 masks. So yeah, it's still coronavirus. That's still a thing. So I throw those in there. And then finally, I got this whole giant bag that I got to sort through of over-the-counter meds. You know, everything from allergens to Tylenol to cold and flu. Um, basically, uh, some legal methamphetamine. So I got to sort through that and put and pick out my favorites and put that in the um, the little um, storage pocket for personal meds. Earlier I said hypothetically you could put your own pouches in here and I don't know what that would look like, but that would be pretty cool. I just didn't have the time to go down that rabbit hole with this video. So anyways, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and put this back in and getting it back in here, guys, is super simple. I've just folded it up. I go ahead and slap it down there on the Velcro and then un unfold it to the other side. Make sure it's fitted in there well so it closes okay and I think, there we are, I think we're good to go. Whoops, I think I lost something, hold on. Yeah, so I lost my tweezers, so check this out. This right here, this organizational panel, I wish there was some like little closure thing to prevent these items from falling out, that would be nice. But then again, you probably want them you know, easily accessible in a pinch, so that being what it is, another thing to mention of what I'm about to change out is I'm adding a Sharpie here, and then I'm also getting rid of these tweezers. But let's go ahead and get this back in the bag, make sure this closes up. Get everything back in the bag. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this wound dressing right here. Swap it out for the emergency bandage. Or 
works. Now, we got these decon pads. Let me see where would be a good spot for these. I'm gonna stick these right up here up front because I want these to be easily accessible. And it's nice too because these, these mesh pockets actually have a little give and take. There's a little bit of extra room in here where I can stuff some various items like what you see here. We'll just put two in for now. I don't wanna overdo it. And then finally, we also need to find room for the TQ. I'm thinking that once I have, they already have a complete pressure dressing right here. This ace bandage right here can be used to apply pressure with hmm, a combine dressing or something similar, but I do need room for the tourniquet. So I wonder, maybe it can just fit right there. All right, so that's gonna work there. And then finally, putting those N95 mask in there. And then there's just one other thing. Oh yeah, so I gotta find a location for the duct tape. And that's pretty easy. What I'm gonna do is wrap the duct tape around the multi-tool. Maybe a good idea. Maybe not. I mean, yeah, I guess there would be a situation where I might have to take this off multi-tool so I can use a multi-tool I'm not gonna stress out about it too much I would just like to have some duct tape in here and this seems like a reasonable place to put it we can store that right here and I think guys we're pretty much good to go oh no the only other thing I gotta do let's see here what do we got <laughs> all right yeah I got the liquid crack Got ThyroSafe. I don't know. Is there like a nuke gonna go off anytime soon? Allergy relief. I don't get allergies. Advil. What do we got here? We got some sea locks. I don't know if that's expired or what the deal is. Burn gel. Um, hydrocortisol cream. Some triple antibiotic cream. Some antacids. Not a bad idea. Oh yeah, some cold and flu meds. Some Imodium. That's a good idea and then some Advil and we will throw in a few of these stackers and easily enough here guys you see it says personal so we're gonna oh cool so they threw in threw in some ziplocs for you know any sort of uh, prescription medications you may have i don't have any thankfully so i don't have to worry about that neither does anybody in my family so we just go ahead and put all that over the counter goodness right there. And I think guys, that's it. But does it close? Okay guys, so there you have it, a comprehensive first aid kit. That does not suck. And just to make sure that I had a second opinion on this, I ran this by my friend who's a Navy doc and he checked it out and gave it a thumbs up. And quite honestly guys, if you're not focused and paying close attention to the medical part of your prepping strategy, you're missing out on the big picture because there are a thousand different ways you can get hurt. And I'm telling you, based on experience, I used to volunteer in a hospital in deep Southern West Virginia, and I love y'all in West Virginia, but man, they came in with some crazy shit. Seriously, hunting season, dude walks in with an arrow, like literally right out of his forehead, and he's completely coherent. His buddy shot him at like five meters, somehow thought he was a turkey. Nobody bought that, right? Another guy somehow got his pecker stuck inside a raccoon. He had an interesting story as to why that happened. And overall, guys, there's literally a gigantic book called the ICD-10 Codes. And for each one of those medical codes, there was a related incident that happened to create that code. So lots of crazy things can happen in real life. Hopefully you don't get your pecker stuck inside a raccoon. I would not advise that. It doesn't sound like fun, especially getting it out. Who knows what happens? But anyways, point of the matter, guys, is focus on your medical preps. As much as you look at the bullets, as much as you look at the beans, this is also very important. Now, if you're interested in picking this up, I appreciate the support. Go down there in the pin post. Check out the links I have down there. I will also have a link to their uh, particular brand 
of duct tape and also their biodegradable wet wipes. These things are pretty sweet. I just used them when I was out in the field for three days and they are good to go and they're alcohol free, pH balanced, hypoallergenic. So you can just basically, I mean, like I basically took a bath of these for lack of a better term. So links to all these items down there in the pinned post. I appreciate the support guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Show your support for the channel by checking out the wide range of survival gear available at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We stock only top quality, rugged, tactical equipment and apparel designed to support any mission or situation life may throw your way. Any gear you've seen in this video is linked up down there in the pin post and be sure to check out the suggested videos for more real world survival content and training.